Hello. Hello, my name is Osamu Aoki. I'll be talking about modernizing packaging tutorial and practical challenges of DEP5. And besides documentation, I do package uh, input method. And also, if you install any Asian language, you're likely to have my glue code to put select all these input methods. Anyway, uh, maintenance guide, which was started by Joseph at 1999, and it was based on Dev Helper 2, and that's maybe one year after they actually started, and also tool of choice was DHMake, which also started a year ago. So it was very fresh and new, and it had an actual package as an example at that moment. And that was actually based on make file. And he had uh, some nice Latin words. Basically, go by example. That's what he meant. And back then, I was uh, sending patch. And I was invited to be a DD. I said, eh, I don't need to. Then I got into the new maintenance queue and stayed quite a bit and eventually became a DD. But yeah, and that's how I started. And that's how this document was started. And but after a couple of years, it was getting a little bit old. So I started taking over the maintenance of maintenance guide. And, uh, oh, so and Dev Helper became 2 to 4. And oh, wait, wait, what did I do? And uh, now Dev Helper's guide uh, changed for 4 to 7. And actually, 7 was one of the epoch making ones. Seven, eight, eight, nine, and that's when the DH syntax came in. And also, uh, what happened was uh, Debian doc SGML was getting outdated, and I had to maintain it <laughs> to keep it building. But uh, I actually converted it, and I'm asking policy to do it, and they are now finally moving to this way. So, and PO4A that was used wasn't used originally, but it's eventually used. So it's now have a very good collection of translation. And also, uh, with this 12 years, I had to do quite a bit of these ad hoc additions, multi-arch, dpackage, and symbols, library packaging name convention, in extremely short version, because there was no document in, within Debian policy. So for newcomers to understand, at least some short text. And also some help by text for these uh, key tools, which is widely used. But it was becoming, in one word, messy. That's what it was. 12 years, you can't blame it. And I realized there are quite a bit of challenges uh, to make a packaging tutorials. One is. Packaging tool itself had a kind of not so well organized document. And one of the candidates was UseScan. So I've been working on UseScan recently and made a reasonable make file with decent format. And that released recently. So that's pretty good. And some packaging tool, uh, as I said, it's like UseScan, you up, you, you update, it was extendable, even though I don't like PAL much. I had to write it. And, but then DHMake license check was another uh, tool in PAL. Uh, I forgot. Ah, this is, I think, PAL. But extending it was non intuitive and it was a little bit difficult for me, so I didn't extend it. And then also, packaging to, uh, requirement has been moving and set, you know, full use of DH7 or 9 or 10. And most packages are either auto tools, CMake, C these standard packaging uh, upstream, upstream build structure exists. And also, there is a lot of get text support. So that has to be covered. And this isn't too much about uh, documentation, but multiple table was possible with dpackage 3. So use can need to be updated, uh, which wasn't the case. And the multiple binary packages. There wasn't much support in DHMake to make uh, multiple binary packages out of one source. And it wasn't intuitive. So, and writing down all these details in text, especially in English, 
is even harder than writing power call for me. So that was a big uh, uh, stopping point. Uh, press the wrong button. What happened? <laughs> Sorry, went the wrong way. Anyway, uh, and then there was a substuba, multi arch, reproducible build. All these new things came in. So, how do we move forward? That's how I faced the problem. And then, the uh, packaging tutorial need to, was doing all the hard ad hoc fixes, but that's not good enough. And we need a structural change. And also, root cause, that's tools, need, need to be updated. And so, if there is a wall, we need to challenge it. As this wall was challenged. There are a couple other walls which need to be challenged. Okay. So how do we do it? Uh, one thing I did was updated use, use scan and basically wrote reasonable pod documents, so now it's readable, and added a couple features. And I wanted to add more about this PGP and signature support and also Git repo support, because it is Git getting very popular to publish that there and another thing is uh, uh, this DH make this was kind of fixed three format output so I need to be a little bit more s flexible and that's how I decided to write this dev make it was supposed to be very simple this was my original scope and I wanted to release for Jesse. I was almost done. Then I got a little bit greedy and started writing the five copyright template generator because it wasn't there. And but there was some. I thought I fixed bag and then I introduced bag, so I decided not to release it for Jesse. And finally got released for this uh, sketch. Anyway, uh, that's how this new tool was written. It wasn't too much about I hate Powell, it was because I need to cover these new features, and that was the only way to, for me to write. And okay, let's talk about Dev5. It's a very interesting uh, format, and standard, machine readable, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, what's the benefit? Actually, forget about machine readable. The biggest advantage is Human reviewer hack friendly. That was one of the best things happened. So if you want to read it, you don't need to look for all the files. It's all there. Or well, at least it was supposed to. And regular and amb ambiguous format, you know, file name and all those are linked. And that was uh, actually becoming a pr uh, requirement for, to get the package accepted. So initial package, they put a lot of effort to make it. And uh, they did. And well, reality, the only machine readable usage is maybe in license incompatibility, which is already known, so it wasn't much used. At least to me, I, I, I may be wrong, but that's my impression. And initial practical challenges of DEP5 implementation was no active enforcement of consecutive uploads. I don't want to name particular package, but I have seen some uh, package changing license. It's free license to free license, so it's okay with uh, Debian, but the copyright file it was carrying the old license, so that, and it was accepted to the FTP, so that was happening. So and just because partly you know, for developers, limited time, it's too much work to do all these manual check every upload. And there's no automatic check on the server side or FTP master side to check it and kick it out, so of course. And uh, Linsian check wasn't implemented because there is no automatic script to do it. And then f file format limitation. And this is, may sound a little bit uh, corner case, but uh, MIT license type of license has many texts and mostly putting some company name in it. So uh, maybe I'm re wrong, but I re read it like you are supposed to copy exact copy text, write text from source to the copyright file. So then you need to copy many, many files. To me, that's it sounded. So that was a limitation. 
And also, uh, DEV5 doesn't dictate, or this, this was left to the implementer and all the tool manufacturers, creators thing, rules to store a machine-generated template. Actually, I didn't think about it, but somebody else thought about it, and they are putting it in. That's a good idea. And method to track previous human uh, uh, decisions, because you make automatic file, but by the time you are supposed to put it in the Debian package, human made the changes. So since there is no machine-generated file stored, so it's kind of difficult to identify what was done. And the method to detect license check mismatch. And since it's, it's not intuitive to uh, compare human edited version to the machine generated or generated one. So it's kind of a linked problem, but that was the problem. And OK, this is the example of the <laughs> MIT license. Basically, if you look at the XORG X server package, they still have an old fashioned copyright file. And I think 60 some type of MIT type of license are listed there. So a lot. So if you do it in a modern way and following the Dev 5, maybe you have to write an MIT license, uh, variant 1, variant 2, you know, up to maybe variant 65. Anyway, and for Denberg program, I have actually uh, like ham and ham case, you know, uh, test case in the package to test build. And I have 75 type of these MIT license, different license in it as a test case. And there's 180 uh, license uh, template file to be tested. Anyway, that's one challenge. And another challenge is all tool files. I know it's kind of stupid, but there's lots of you know, GPL permissive license, auto tools, exception, etc. in make file and make file in, et cetera. So, uh, but I see no one, no one in who does manual hand-picked dev file file made that exact cutout of those copyright uh, or whatever statement there. And I once said, yeah, why do we have to put this? And maybe we should relax the uh, policy. And they got kind of, oh, you're not supposed to do it. Then, OK, I don't argue, so I just decided I keep kept the tool to be able to produce it by having extra. If you want, go ahead, kill yourself. But I'm going to make my default a little bit more reasonable. That's how I did. And after two-year delay, people kind of caught up. And the license check seemed to be getting better, as I checked recently for this talk. So, and the people are using it. I have to admit that, so that must be pretty good to be used. And I also saw CDBS, basically they seem to call this one, I may be wrong, but then was using it. Okay, so if he d uses it, it maybe has a good reason to do it. But uh, there are other tools uh, to make Dev5 tools, and that's, uh, this one actually uses maybe simplified old license check type of text in it. And that's my tool. It has a copyright uh, file generator and also verifier in it. And this is another Python implementation. At least uh, Python Debian seem to be a little bit more professional writing style than mine. And then I see Ruby. So, OK. Anyway. And What's the difference? Uh, license check, uh, maybe do uh, the scan source, do some minimal uh, editing, removing some maybe leading style or something. And then they do partial text match. And then wherever it's matched, they cut it out. And they seem to make dev 5 output. I don't know how exactly, it depends on how you to use to, they may be are creating uh, extracted text, or they may be just labeling as a MIT license. But anyway, one of the things I found out that CDBS, I think one, I forgot, GDBC or something, was using uh, automatic generated file stored in under Debian directory. That's a good idea. I should imitate it <laughs> or just uh, steal the idea. And 
but this definitely, you know, due to this way of cutting out, uh, at least they're not making so much nit nit nitpick type of the decisions on the license text. And it's pretty decent for, uh, oh, oh, oh. anyway, uh, that was pretty decent for uh, GPL2 type of uh, just a simple assignment uh, licenses. And then what they make does is actually I scan text and usually just assume the top portion has a license text and just cut out the entire section there and remove maybe simply uh, copyright or hold that name and then rest I assume that's a license and I kind of of course in many of them use this boilerplate so it's same so then I bunch them up then I do uh, full text match for the license and starting with a very rigid one to relaxed one so we know what level of matches it does and then I write make a depth file output that's maybe too picky but as you know with this method uh, as a side I could do the uh, depth file generated file against a source check okay so far so good and at least some people you seem to be using and uh, but now that I see other people did seem to have a different idea so maybe I may modify or just maybe stick the license check <laughs> into the dev make tool and drop that my current code but if I ever change my code maybe I should do some maybe limiting the ranges of file to be scanned or at least a way to do it and also the uh, license um, text match and sometimes they have a uh, totally unrelated English words after that so maybe trim it uh, beyond what's matched then do this depth five generation that may make a, a little bit cleaner result so that's so much for depth five and uh, maybe that's from next release I'll be looking at and at first a uh, packaging tutorial goes uh, you know, basic ideas, maybe it's not time limited. So I basically made dev make based uh, tutorial. And the key here is this. I have a source actually customized for this uh, tutorial. And also I have all these variations documented at the tutorial. So you can have a exact example and also this source uh, package can be unpacked to create a log of packaging so that people can try and experiment with a simple source other than some existing huge Debian real package and I think these are relatively simple and if you have any suggestion to add I'm thinking maybe make it, making font package or something as addition and so that's what I'm thinking and of course it has to be DH10 and some of the words I need to correct it uh, to be neutral etc etc so that's what I'm looking at so I'll be glad to get any feedback or suggestions and that's pretty much my talk thank you very much for listening